Hey, welcome in KM, KYMZ Collectibles, Kim. So I guess Kim is the name. Thanks for stopping by Hey DD's Boutique Gifts. Uh, I've been working on cleaning out my garage today, and I have an estate that my wife and I basically cleaned out. Oh, gosh. It's been probably over a year ago now, uh, and we you know, sold all the furniture and the bigger items. And now I have all these boxes to go through and I'm really trying to get my garage cleaned out. So thought I'd do it. We'll go through it together, see what we find. To be honest, I have no idea what's in these boxes because it's been so long since we packed them up and we bought the whole house basically, or almost the, the whole contents of the house. So, hey, Merriweather Market. So, you know, we were really just slamming stuff into boxes as fast as we could and really not paying attention to, to what we had anyway. So it uh, should be fun. I know the last one of these I did. Um, I think everybody enjoyed it. And I know I enjoy watching people unbox stuff as well as unboxing things myself. So uh, if you see anything that you might be interested in, just let me know. Uh, here's the way I do my shipping. Uh, I do everything as a flat rate. Then that allows me to combine shipments to the extent possible. And then I'll always refund uh, any overage and just charge you exactly, uh, you know, what, what it costs me to ship. So here's the way it works for the U.S. You can see the weights there. We have up to one pound will be five, then up to two pounds, eight, three pounds, 10, four pounds, 12, and then over four pounds, 12 as well. And I do ship to Canada as well. And there's those prices. But uh, anyway, that's how that'll work. And if you see something you're interested in, just let me know and I'll give you a starting bid and we'll go from there. Oh, I guess I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Stuart with Franklin Hill Ventures for anybody who's new to my streams. I see a lot of familiar uh, well, names. I guess they're not technically faces. Uh, I don't do lives that often, but uh, every couple of weeks, probably I'll, I'll hop on here. And it's usually these types of shows rather than something scheduled. Uh, but I'm Stuart with Franklin Hill Ventures here in Knoxville, Tennessee. So if you're ever coming through town, make sure you stop and check out my antique booths. I have three of them here in the Knoxville area. I have one at Bearden Antique Mall, one at West End Antiques, and then one at Granny's Attic in Clinton. And just a quick plug, if uh, you're anywhere close to Knoxville the first weekend in May, that is the Spring Festival in Clinton. And it's a really uh, pretty big deal. I mean, they close down all the streets, all the antique markets in town run sales. There's street vendors, live music, food trucks, uh, everything like that. Uh, and there's probably, I'd say there's eight to 10 antique malls all within walking distance on the main drag in Clinton. So uh, fun thing to come to. If you do come, I'll be working at Granny's probably Friday and Saturday, excuse me, of that weekend. So uh, make sure you introduce yourself and, uh, Anyway, we'll get started. Let me kind of show you what I have. This, I went ahead and pulled one box out of the garage and let me flip the camera around. So it's this box here. You can see it's pretty big plastic box. I have no idea what's in it. Yes, Clinton, Tennessee. Monica's poured art. Are you near Clinton or near Knoxville? I know there's a couple of people who've stopped by my shows who, uh, who live in Knoxville. There was somebody who lived actually out here on the west side of Knoxville where I do. I can't remember who that was now. But uh, yeah, Clinton, Tennessee. If you ever Google Clinton, oh, okay, Clinton, Arkansas. Yeah, if you ever Google Clinton, Tennessee or like Google top 10 antiquing destinations, usually Clinton's listed in the top 10. Uh, it's just a high concentration of antique malls all in one place. Hey, Moon Sky Vintage. Anybody else that I miss, welcome in. Looks like we have 21 people. If you do happen to be watching on my YouTube or my Facebook, uh, I think they put a QR code on there now, if I'm not mistaken, that you can just click on to jump right over here to Knickknacks if you want to be able to bid. But if you just want to watch, that's fine. And you can do that from uh, Facebook. But if you want to chat, I think you need to come over here to, uh, to Knickknacks. And it's just knickknacks.net, N-I-K-N-A-X dot net. All right, well, tell you what, let's get started. I'm just going to start pulling stuff out of here. And we'll be surprised together. So it should be fun. And as I mentioned, if you see anything you might be interested in, let me know. Let's see if I can uh, unwrap this stuff without throwing it on my tile floor. Last time I did uh, one of these, I actually uh, broke something. So I'm going to try not to do that. All right. If I can figure out how to unwrap this. 
Oh, well, that's cool. So it looks like a fish pointer. And it is, oh, it's got something. I guess it's got old dirt in it. So vintage dirt inside. Let me see what the, uh, oh, it's an Anarco. You can see the bottom there. But yeah, oh, just sold something. Looks like on another platform. This one does have a few chips. Looks like it's got a chip there. Got a few little like uh, chips on the man. Anyway, you have that, uh, looks like maybe a rainbow trout fish planter. Hey, Attic on the Beach, bee farmer. Thanks for coming in. There's something else in here, but I'm not having any luck. There we go. Oh, a little, uh, I guess, glass bird. Little, I don't know if it's like not quite cobalt blue, but it is blue. Uh, can't tell if it's hand blown or pressed. I don't think it's got a little pontal on the bottom, but in any case, you got the little blue bird there. That's all in there. Hi, Peggy Combs, one of my fellow. Uh, Antique Mall people at Bearden Antique Mall and at West End Antiques and uh, in uh, Knoxville. Tell you what, Dee Dee's Boutique Gifts. And let me just make sure it doesn't have any chips or cracks before. I can't tell if the beaks. I can't tell if the beak is like has a little. It's a little rough, but I can't tell if that's just the way it was made. But I'll tell you what, I would do a. Uh, since I don't know on that, I'd do a $4 start on that. If you're interested, let me know. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, it would be $5 on the shipping on that. Okay. Tell you what, let me add this. So you'll have to bear with me when I do these pop-ups. I do have to add them as I go. So, oh, the Bluebird of Happiness. So, and just like I said, if you look, I don't know if his beak stuck out more. I mean, he's got a beak, but it's definitely rough. But that could just be how it was made, too. Uh, let's see. Is it signed? Oh, it is signed. Uh, it is Ron. Ron Ray, I think, 1989. So there you go. Ron Ray, 1989. So this was uh, getting college or this was made about the time I was getting close to getting out of college. All right, so let me add this. And I haven't done this in a, <laughs> a week now, or actually a couple weeks, so bear with me. Let's see. I think I'm, yep, I'm in the right place. So we're going to add this as an auction. We're going to call this Bluebird. Tell you what, I'm going to put Bluebird Glass, just in case we end up with another Bluebird of any sort. Said that would be a four dollar start. We will do 15 seconds since we've already talked about it. The shipping is going to be five dollars. And shipping to Canada would be $12.99 on that one. So I do use Pirate Ship Global Ex Simple Export Rate for uh, all my uh, Canada shippings. It turns out to be cheaper. Um, then, you know, using like one of the postal service ones. So, all right, we don't need to add a category and let me add to stream, bring to stage. Hope it doesn't bug y'all that I talk myself through this every time, but so move to stage. All right. I see it on the stage. Let me just show it one more time. So you have, it does have, if you can see in the middle, it's got the like little controlled bubble I guess is what it would be it is signed I think we said it was Leo or who did we say it was 1989 Ron Ray it looks like R-O-N-R-E-Y so Ron Ray so there we go we'll go ahead and start that one right now 15 seconds and it is off and running thank you Dee Dee's Boutique Gifts for the bid on that Yeah, and hopefully everybody can get some great deals on things today. I mean, I'm 
going to sell this stuff a lot cheaper than I probably would in my antique booths. But it's stuff that, like I said, so yeah, if you weren't here earlier, all the stuff we're looking at today is from uh, a house clean out we did. And it's been over a year ago now. And we sold all the furniture and bigger items. And, um, you know, and then these boxes have just been sitting in the garage. So really don't know what wall we're going to find. But the first two things we found were pretty cool. We had the fish planter and then the bluebird there. And uh, thanks for the bids. And all this stuff should ship out tomorrow. Uh, I generally try to ship next day. So, hey, welcome in Don, Donna RN. And thank you if you're a nurse. I worked in a hospital and I know what nurses have to put up with. I was not a nurse, but I was in the clinical engineering department. Hey, Aunt Penny McKay 22. All right, let's see what we got next here. Well, looks like just a shade, like a, I don't know, maybe we'll have several of these, but just a frosted glass, uh, like a lamp, glass lamp shade. Figure out what to do with all my paper. Here's a corkscrew with uh, made of wood. I don't see anything to indicate maker on that does have some kind of residue right here, like sticky. Looks like tape residue. Hey, Donnie, honey, thank you for coming in. Oh, wow, this is cool. Here's a wood duck. It's very long. It's kind of like in Star Wars when the Enterprise, or not Enterprise, the whatever the ship in Star Wars, the ship in Star Wars is that comes by at the beginning, but uh, this is signed right here. It's Mark. No, I guess it's from, it must have been a souvenir from Martinique. So I'm assuming that's the country it came from, not the maker. But yeah, looks to be in, in really good condition there. So uh, while we're looking at ducks, here's another one here. This one's ceramic, I think. Actually, it could be, it's either wood or resin, maybe. It's a Price Products made in, oh uh, yeah, that one's just a made in China one there. So probably resin on that one would be my guess. Hey, Vintage Wise Co, Wise Co or Wisco. Here's a little box of stuff. I guess those are napkin rings. Looks like uh, maybe bamboo, bamboo nap napkin rings. Here's a music box, innards. Oh, is it anybody's birthday? It's playing happy birthday. This is for anybody whose birthday is today out there. So we'll have to listen to it play in the background now because I don't think there's any way to stop it. Yeah, these are all napkin rings, it looks like. <laughs> Other than some school pictures. Yeah, just got some metal napkin rings. Those were made in India. Looks like they're brass. There's some wood ones with strawberries on them. Yeah, so it looks like you got four of the strawberries and then some of the metals as well. Um, here's some more napkin rings. These are little fish. These are Sh Shafford. S H A F O R D. F F O R D. They were made in Taiwan. So, what kind of things does everybody collect? Oh, yes, you're right. They are apples, not strawberries. I would have looked at them straight on rather than trying to just look at it in the camera. So, yeah. Wood napkin rings with apples. It's a couple little cheese spreaders. Look like pine cones. Let's see if there's anything underneath. There's one, two, three, four, 
Looks like there's eight of these fish ones. Clear crackle glass. Maybe we'll run into some of that if we're lucky. All right, it sounds like the uh, music box is about finished. Do we have any ephemera people in here? After we finish going through this box, my garage is loaded with ephemera I could go through. I don't even know what else out there. Here's a left and little trinket dish shaped like a flower. Looks like it's got, or shaped like a leaf, and then it's got rose on it. Here's a ladle. And a little bell. And then some more of these napkin rings. Just brass napkin rings. So we had a lot of napkin rings. Let's see what's in here. Oh, it's a uh, gurgling fish pitcher. It does have a crack on the lip. My grandmother had one of these. She had one of the really big ones, and we used to think that was so cool when we were kids. You know, you pour and it gurgles. Uh, this one's definitely got, I mean, it's dirty and has a chip on the lip. But still cool nonetheless. Here's some kind of box. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, it looks like some pinback buttons. There's a Garfield that says, I love Sequoia. Here's a little Coca-Cola mirror. Let's see if that's got a date on it. 1984 is when the little Coke, the little Coke mirror is from. Mm. Yeah, whoever this was must have taught at Sequoia or had a kid who went to Sequoia or something. That is a school here in Knoxville. Here's a little watch on the chain. You can try to hypnotize everybody. Um, let's see if that has a brand. It's a Lucerne. So, I wonder if it's a wind-up or a battery. Let's see. I think it's a wind up. Can't tell. I don't, I don't think it's working though. Hmm. Anyway, so I'm not sure about that. Hey, April. I saw your package arrived. I hope it arrived safely. Here's a little, little charm that says 1981 on it. That would have been the about the year I was starting high school. I don't think it's real gold or anything. I think it is uh, just like a little, you know, costume jewelry type thing. Perfect. I'm glad. Uh, that's really all that's in this one. There's like a hat pin. I've already jammed my, jabbed myself with it. There's a little uh, stick pin with a pearl on it. So anyway, you had all that in that box. Here's a little frame. It says Silk Road, hand decorated, 1983. And it's Takahashi, San Francisco. So there's the front of it. And then there's the back. So pretty, pretty cool little frame there. No chips or cracks on that. At least not yet. So I drop it on the floor. Let's see, here's the top of a butter dish with a snowman. So hopefully we'll find the rest of the, the butter dish in there at some point. Yeah, for anybody just joining, my name's Stuart with Franklin Hill Ventures. And we're just unboxing um, some estate boxes from a house we cleaned out. Do I still have the brass moth? It's in my buy it now. If you, uh, in fact, I could probably go at it so you could look at it. 
uh, give me just a second here. Let me go to add. Is there a way to search? Yeah, let's see. Moth. There we go. Okay, I've got to check how to... I don't see the add button when I do it that way, though. There we go. Add to stream. Yeah, so it is. No, it's uh, it's actually I just added it to the buy it now for uh, the show here if you want to look at it. And then I always take offers on stuff as well. So I think I've got 32 on it. Here's some Royal Norfolk. Snowman plate. It does have a little chip along the rim, but no chips along the edge. And it looks like... Maybe yeah, there's just one of those. And then here's a... Looks like a hand-painted plate. It doesn't have any markings on the back. This was probably maybe like a hobby piece of some sort. Hi, Sierra. Thanks for coming in. Hey, Dia. And thanks for asking about the moth, Heather. Uh, so here's a little matching. Here's This matches the frame that I showed a second ago. It's from the same company and has the same design. It's from that uh, Silk Road in San Francisco. So a matching frame and trinket dish there. Here's just some clear glass. Clear glass is the, uh, I have so much of it in my booth and it's not very popular right now. So uh, it's probably about time to do some purging of it. I mean, I do sell it. There's people who look for it, but it's not as many as there used to be. Yeah, here's another, another piece there. Yeah, I do like, I guess you're talking about the frame being cute. Uh, that is pretty cute frame. Um, and it was from 1983, I think. April, I hope so, because I have a lot of it. If you were to go out to my booth, there's just a little made in China dish there. Oh, wow, this is cool. And here's something that's signed. So it's like lusterware almost, but it's a little art glass duck. It's purple and white, and it is signed on the bottom. Let's see if we can read who this is. It's 1989, but I can't really read the name. So, but yeah, he's he's very pretty, and let's see how long he is. He's like four and a quarter inches long, so... Let me know if anybody's interested in that. I would probably do like $8 on that, which I think would be a really good deal for that. But yeah, just if you can see the way the colors kind of uh, do that. All right. Let me add this one real quick. I really, really appreciate everybody spending a little bit of your Monday. I think it's Monday. When you work from home like me, it's like, the days just blend together, and I never know what day it is. So we'll call this an art glass duck. I've been working for from home so long, though. Even before I was reselling from home, I was, um, I mean, I worked at a hospital in Chattanooga, which is an hour and 40 minutes from here, and I would work from home usually two or three days a week and then drive down there the other days that I wasn't working from home. Let's see. Let me make sure this one's going to be. Yeah, that'll still be under a pound. So it'll be $5. I wish you would remember the Canada shipping so I didn't have to type it back in every time. So give me just a second to type that in. And list item.
All right, that should be on the stage. Let me just, uh, well, I mean, the, so any of the stuff that you see in my online store is not at the shops. I do not ever list anything online that I have at the mall. They would hate me at the mall if I was constantly having to call, hey, I sold this, pull it off the shelf for, you know, or if I sold it at the mall and didn't know and then somebody bought it online. So, uh, you know, my stuff at the malls, which I do have three, Beard and West Hills, well, West End and Clinton. And then, um, but then I have like three or 400 things probably in the district or the knickknacks store. And then on some of the other online marketplaces, I even have more. But so let's see. I don't feel any chips or cracks on the beak. I don't see any. There is some like price tag residue on the bottom. And like here's the signature. I can't read the signature other than I can see the 89. But it's like the price tags kind of. You could probably clean that off and see it a little better. But I do not see any chips or cracks. So I think we're good to go on that. All right, we'll go ahead and start this. And it's going to be a $8 start, 15 seconds. And here we go. It is running. Thank you, Collector's House, Jim Dandy, Teresa. Thanks for the bids, everyone. It is a really neat piece. I mean, I haven't, the colors on that are just different. You don't see a lot of purple, purple things like that. Yeah, I enjoy doing these pop-up lives every once in a while. It kind of gives me a break from the, you know, the kind of drudge, drudge, drudgery that is listing stuff. So I agree, April. This is a really nice piece. So looks like Teresa make nope, we got another bit at the last second. Thank you, Collector's House. Thank you to everyone for all the bids. I'm glad it's going to go to somebody's home who enjoy it. It's literally been sitting in my garage for over a year now, just, uh, you know, all out there lonely and everything. So, hey, welcome in Picking with Parkinson's. Thanks for coming in. Anybody else that I've missed? Um, we are just going through, like, one box right now that I pulled out of the garage from a house we cleaned out um, over a year ago now. And I've been making a concerted effort here lately to get through stuff quicker. And I mean, I've actually, hey, congratulations, Teresa. That'll be coming your way tomorrow. Uh, I've really done a pretty good job with recent estates that I've gotten. This was just so much stuff that, you know, we pulled out all the big furniture and a few other larger things and sold it. And then this stuff just kind of got forgotten. We, we bought out like two or three houses all within a really tight time period too um so you know after we go through this box we'll walk back out to the garage and and pull another box and or just look through things and see what we find here's some kind of little piece of artwork on canvas i think i said thanks Teresa, but thanks again if i didn't and thanks to everybody who bid this is signed by somebody but i can't can't read it it's a just a little small print on canvas there. All right, let's see what we got in this box. Here's a change purse. No change in it though. Can't tell, it's, it's got some wear and stuff anyway. Yeah, this all looks, I don't think any of this thing's, any of this stuff's really any count, just some little cloth change purses that one's kind of cool there that one is Vera Bradley with uh, floral design just a little chain or a little wallet I guess it is see if there's hundred dollar bills in there don't see any hundred dollar bills on that side and no hundred dollar bills in there but Vera Bradley and then there's a gold one and that was all that was in there it's just those change purses. This is cool. It's kind of hard to show it all in one. It's um, like a bed tray. It's got the fold-out legs. It doesn't. It says Ross Abaddon. It's the signature down in the corner. 
but I don't see any other markings to indicate age. I would guess maybe 80s, 70s or 80s on that. Here's an old clipboard. Yeah, I probably will. April, anything I don't sell, this is just, you know, this is kind of next on my list of stuff to list. So before I list it, you know, I like to bring it and see if there's any interest in the online. But yeah, I'll go through and, and put those in the shop. Here's an old book that's Lippincott's Farm Manuals. This is Productive Poultry and husband, Husbandry. Let's see, this looks like it's probably pretty old. It does have somebody's name in the front. Yes, this is from... Well, oh, here we go. 19... Looks like this edition's from 1919. Look at the all the chickens there. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, you know, and... I've got to learn more about like jewelry and stuff like that because that's not my area of expertise. I mean, I'm more of so like the areas that I feel like I'm best in are ephemera. I know a lot about ephemera. Any China, I think I've said before in my lives, my wife calls me the China King of Knoxville just because I sell so much. In fact, I sold a, uh, sold a Theodore Haviland coffee pot couple of days ago for $175. That was one of my better China sales I've had lately. It was a really cool piece from like the 18, late 1800s. So that'd be awesome, April. So um, I can send you pictures of stuff. This looks like, I don't know if it's vintage or not, but here's a binder with the University of Tennessee seal on it. I imagine whoever's house this was must have gone to UT probably or had kids who went to UT. That's a very thick binder there. Oh, wow. And so, wonder what's in here. It's completely full. Tell you what, I'm going to, let me, sh let me show the stuff I took out and I'm going to put it back in so I can take it back out to the garage. Let me just show these last things. Here's a little book that says, Sisters Make the Best Friends. I never had a sister, just two brothers, so I don't know about that. Here's a postcard book from Edinburgh, Scotland. Looks like it's got 24 photographs or postcards inside. Here's a Don McNeil's favorite poems. Memory time selections from the Breakfast Club, and this is from 1951. So, poetry book. Oh, this is cool. Here's a map from the 1933 Chicago World's Fair, it looks like. I can't tell if... I guess this is the outer pouch here. And then here's the map inside. It's actually, it's a booklet, I guess. It's like, it's not so much a map, it's a booklet. So it does have some condition issues like this. Oh, I can't tell if this cover is supposed to be detached. But anyway, it's a 1933 Chicago World's Fair, like a train. I guess it's a train time timetables, maybe. And here's something from Sterling Castle. Looks like something, a brochure from the same area. Looks like they must have taken a trip over to Scotland or something. Oh, wow, this is cool. This is the USS Wyoming. And it's like a photograph that's on... You know, it's like when you see the studio photographs, it's on that same kind of board, but it's a picture of this ship. I don't know anything about the USS Wyoming, but it says photo by D-Draw or somebody. And it says view from forward USS Wyoming fleet flagship. So, yeah, that's a... That's a really cool picture there. 
and then there's another castle. So tell you what, we'll go through this bag in a second. Let me just, I'm going to put all this stuff back in. So we'll leave that ship picture out because that'll go good in an ephemera show. So there was that picture there. And as I mentioned, if anybody sees anything else they want me to run, just let me know. There's that hand-painted fruit plate. There's the snowman plate. There was the Lippincott's farm manual for productive poultry. So if you uh, have chickens, you can make them be more productive. Here was the little Silk Road frame from San Francisco from the night from 1983, I think, along with the matching uh, trinket dish. clipboard and the bed tray. All the little change purses that April's going to help me with. This little Lefton trinket dish that's shaped like a leaf. We had the, what I think is probably resin duck. That one was just a made in China item. Then we had the gurgling fish pitcher. Oh, I wonder if I... Oh, I think I saw the other... I think I did see the bottom of the butter dish. I think it just said made in China on the bottom. So we had the snowman butter dish. Then we had all these napkin rings that were shaped like a fish. And then we had the wood duck from Martinique. Some more napkin rings, bamboo ones. We had this corkscrew. And then the first thing we showed was this fish planter. It's like a rainbow trout. And it's from Anarco. Did have a few chips and a few chips along the edge on that one. I think that was everything pretty much. Uh, so let's see what else in this bag. And then that'll take care of that first box. Thanks for the purchase on the two ducks. So here's a it's like a Boy Scout thermometer. It says Smoky Great Smoky Mountain Council, Boy Scouts of America. And then it's got, you know, I don't, I guess the different temperatures light up or there's probably uh, change colors. Here's a little trinket box. Yeah, we're going through this whole bag now. So we'll see what else in here. Here's a little shaving brush, I guess. Let's see. got something I don't want to tear the it snapped close oh it's like a I can't get it open but it looks like it's just like a like if you look it's wool or something inside so I'm not sure if that held a razor maybe well, let's see if this is sterling I don't think it is it doesn't feel like it Yeah, the way it's, I don't think that's sterling, but anyway, it's just a little, little brush. I think it's for like maybe hair cutting or something like that, or it could be shaving cream. Oh yeah. And so here's a, and then here's a razor. So it's a auto strop safety razor. And then there's the, the razor there.
I guess the little, it's almost like a little beard trimmer, then it says valet on it. So, yeah, so anyway, you have that in the case. I can get it back in. There we go. So that in the case. Some kind of maybe watch, I think is what this is. There it is, a Grin Precision. Let's see what's actually in here. Here would be the owner's manual. Yeah, it is from the Grin Watch Company. Oh, it's actually got the receipt where they bought it. Let's see. This was bought in 1973, and they paid $66.95. I don't know if they bought two watches. There's, yeah, I think they bought two watches. I'm not sure which one this was. But anyway, one was $66.95, and one was $33.50. So you have the receipt for the watch. And let's see what the watch looks like. Hopefully it's in here. Hey, Drunken Susie. Oh, yeah. So there you go. Let's see if this one's wind or battery. Looks like this one's battery. So I'm assuming the battery's probably dead. Well, I appreciate you stopping in. So, but anyway, there's the watch. I have no idea if it's working or not, but it does uh, appear to be in pretty good shape. And it's still in the box and everything. And anybody who's come in since uh, I started, just a quick introduction. I'm Stuart with Franklin Hill Ventures here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we are going through some uh, estate clean-out boxes that I had in my garage. Here's some kind of apple paperweight with, I don't know if that's leather or like suede on top is the leaf. It's, it's like acrylic, I think, because it's not very, very heavy. But yeah, it's got some, got some good color on it there. Looks like some kind of military metals and pens and things of that nature. If anybody wants to see any of that stuff closer, let me know. This one says, man working. And then on the back, it's got, I guess you could mail this maybe. I guess you could mail this whole thing like a postcard. So it's got a place to put a stamp and put the address. So oh, here's another watch. This one says Benrus. Let's see, plastic case. And there's that one. Let's see if this one's wind or battery. Oh yeah, this one's wind up. And it does look like once I start it, you can see the second hand moving there. Hmm, that doesn't look like the the watch says Waltham on it, but the box says Benrus. So I don't know. Maybe this box, this watch got put in a different box. But in any case, it's still cool. So you had that. Hey, B Settle, thanks for coming in. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Here's a little Neiman Marcus. Um, I guess it's a change purse. It says made in Spain. Yeah, just like a little. It's got a little hair comb in it. One of the tortoise shell hair combs. 
I guess it's made of leather. Yep, made of leather. It's It says, Ask of God, and it's got a little girl, girl praying. And then I guess that on the back, you could punch those out to where it'll stand up. Here's, a, what do you call those, pomander, or um, the things you put, stuff that smells good in them. I think I said that right. There's just a little wood in there. A little Tennessee Volunteers. I think that's one of those pencil pencil grippers. Trash. Ah, there's a little dog pin cushion. It's made in Japan. See any chips or cracks? Well, no, I think it's just got a little bit of paint loss. It's got a bunch of pins in it. Here's some Christmas ornaments. It's little metal Christmas ornaments. There's a little pocket mirror from Home Federal Bank in Knoxville here. Oh, wow, this is cool. So it's a L and n So l and n the Louisville and Nashville train. It says Baggage Master. So I don't know if this would have gone on. It's kind of, you can see it's curved. I wonder if it went on like a hat, maybe. It's kind of what it looks like. But yeah, that's really cool there. That would be a cool online item, I'm sure. Let's see what else is done in here. I think that's about it of anything to note. Let me just make sure. Here's a little little miniature like ring dish or something. It doesn't have any markings on it. There's a money clip. Looks like maybe copper or brass. It is from something. Oh, the Chinese. Oh, the Chinese theater in Hollywood, California. That's where that came from. A pill case. Thank you, April. Hang out with you enough. I'll be calling all this stuff the right things before long. U A L. So are these, I wonder if these are some kind of baggage tags for United Airlines. Would that, that's the only UAL I can think of. Um, so maybe some kind of baggage identification. They all have the number 11 on them. All right, I think that is everything. Here's some Ford automobile keys. It's got the word Ford on that side and then a picture of an automobile on the other side. I don't know what what model or year or anything those were from. So, all right. So we'll load all this stuff back up and then I'll tell you what, we'll walk out to the garage and grab another box. And see what we can find. I love this. Fact, I'm going to leave that out so I can. I think that was everything. Actually, I'm going to leave that safety razor out and that out. And that money clip out. And that Neiman Marcus thing out. And those UAL tags. Because if I put them back in here, I'll never find them again. well yeah I do too April I like watching other people do it and obviously I like doing it myself as well all 
All right. Well, I think that's everything from the first box. So let me grab the camera and we will, excuse me, walk back out to the garage. Let me clean my hands off here a little bit. Some of that stuff is kind of dirty. All right, hold tight real quick. I'm going to carry this box out of my office real quick, and then I'll be right back. All right, let's see. Let's take this off. And I'll flip the camera around. And we could also shop my shelves here because I have a ton of stuff in here as well. This is all stuff that's listed on other platforms. Well, a lot of it's lift, listed and on knickknacks as well uh, in the uh, in the buy it now. There's the Easter stuff my wife bought to send to uh, our kids who all, none of them live with us anymore. So we have them from Washington State to Houston to Nashville and then one still here in Knoxville. All right, let me open the garage door. So here's our private labeled jams, jellies, butters, and sauces and things like that. And I sell these on some other platforms and do really well. We also sell them in our antique malls. And then I eat a lot of them too. If anybody's interested in ephemera, I have, that's all postcards, that's all ephemera, that's all ephemera, that's all ephemera, that's all ephemera. This is cool right here. It's like an old photo album. I love that. All right, let's get around to this side over here. It's beautiful here today, as you can see. So we built this fence for our dog, but then our dog doesn't like to come outside and she's spoiled. All right, let's see what all we have. It might be better to go to the other side. This is all the stuff from the house that we were looking at is kind of from here over. And then this is another house. It was more like a barn that we cleaned out. And so this stuff, some of it's like really dirty and I need to clean it. Um, but so but some cast iron down there so I'll tell you what let me no we don't make the preserves we have them made for us uh in amish so um they're actually a lot better than if we if we were to make them and then this stuff here was somebody who had an antique booth knew i did this and they just basically gave me all this stuff here. A lot of cast iron down there. Anybody want Beanie Babies? I have a whole box full of Beanie Babies. So, I've gone through probably half of that stuff. So, let's come to this side. Let's see. Here's an old baby doll that's kind of creepy like a composite one that does have some damage there on its head i guess we can grab this box here let's see tell you what you'll have to bear with me i'm gonna have to set the phone down and uh, you'll get to look at that dixie at that glassware while we walk back in sorry about that but we'll see what else in this. A good Monday afternoon so far. Is anybody interested in looking at any ephemera? Because we can definitely pull some of that. So far, I don't think I really noticed that Knickknacks is a huge ephemera crowd. That seems to be do better on some other platforms, but all right. Sorry for the wild ride there. All right, let's see what all we have in this box. 
This box isn't near as big as the other one. Just some kind of little ceramic duck. These people, uh, oh yeah, it's definitely still growing. I love it. I mean, I'm not complaining. It just, you know, right now anyway, it doesn't seem like, it seems like Nick Max, just from what I've seen, like I've been more successful in shows that I've done glassware and things of that nature versus ephemera. Although I did one ephemera show and I mean, I had a really good crowd in there and I sold quite a bit, uh, but like I don't sell as much in the buy it now of the ephemera as I do some other places. So, but yeah, it's definitely still growing and I love the community of this plot, of this marketplace. Um, I mean, because I love going live and doing these, um, you know, just it's it's a nice change of pace, I guess, from the sitting there just listing stuff on the computer. It's a little ceramic squirrel. It's like it's from Taiwan. There. like an Eskimo doll. I don't see any markings on it or anything. But anyway, got that. Oh, this is cool. Here's the uh, Astrodome in Houston, which doesn't exist anymore. Just one of the little smoke, smoked glass trinket dishes. This is from the Christopher Collection, Heavenly Hobos. Back when things like Precious Moments and all those kind of things were all the rage. There were so many companies making these kind of things. And just a little bed base. It's like a, what would you call like a wicker doll, I guess. Just like a handmade little wicker wicker doll there there's some is that an, I guess it's a seal or it's got hair though I don't know what would y'all call that is it a seal it's definitely furry I guess seals have fur so yep I don't know what that, what do you think this held? Looks like it went on the ground like that maybe and held something. Here's some Dixie Stampede if you've ever been, if you've ever been to Pigeon Forge near here. And then it's, that must go with, hmm. Wonder if that goes with one of the dolls. It's actually two of the Dixie Stampede. Wick, okay, not wicker. It's called a straw doll. Thank you. So straw doll. See, I like doing these shows too because I learned so much. April's teaching me about jewelry, and Shy Girl's teaching me about dolls. Neither of which are my areas of expertise for sure. Here's a little set of dishes from Mexico. You have one. Unfortunately, the smallest one's broken. So I'm gonna throw that away because it's. But yeah, you have two of them. Here's a wooden giraffe, but it's lost half its head here, unfortunately. So, probably uh, won't keep that. There's a little pedestal. I'm not sure what that's for. It's like maybe dollhouse furniture. Move your minis. 
I'm not sure I understand the question there. Move your minis. Am I have something behind me I need to move, but I love your minis. That makes more sense. Yeah, and here's a little miniature dog. It says Japan. It's got it embossed in there. He does have a broken ear. And, ah, looks like when Marilyn Monroe got her skirt blown up there. It's just permanently up there, though. It's look like a man and little miniature man and woman doll there. Maybe they sit in these two little ice cream parlor chairs. Oh, here's a little miniature orange crush bottle. So yeah, there's actually quite a few miniatures in this box. It's like a little clay trinket dish or ashtray. And we just have this amber glass triangle candy dish that was in there. That'll probably go to my antique booth. And actually, there's two of the Orange Crush bottles. So that was everything that was in that box. There was actually a lot of stuff crammed in that little box. But so you had the Amber Dish, you have the Crush bottles. And for anybody who wasn't in here, if you see anything that you're interested in, just let me know and I'll let you know what it'll take to start it. There's the little ceramic squirrel figurine. There's the ceramic duck. Had the little Eskimo doll there. The two little ice cream parlor chairs. The podium. Just a little heart with a little vase on it. Then a bud vase, little miniature dog. These two people who I think might have sat in the ice cream chairs. Little seal. Not sure whatever that is. And a little trinket dish. A little hobo. Turn the podium upside down. Might be oh, that's what it is. <laughs> it's all about perspective, right? Yeah. So there you go. These chairs probably go with this here, and then the two people sit at it. Thank you. Yeah. And then you have the hobo, the straw doll. I'll make sure I call that by its right name. It is losing the little buds off the end, a little few of them. Then you had the Mexican ceramic dishes. The giraffe with half an ear or half his head gone. Probably just get rid of him. And then the two Dixie Stampede. And then the Astrodome dish. And I think that was it for uh, that was it for that box. So scoot that over there. Tell you what, let me just run out and get another one real quick, and then I'll be right back in, rather than carrying the camera out this time, since y'all already seen the garage. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back.
Hey, welcome in Momo F2, Elber Dad. Appreciate y'all stopping by. Just a uh, quick introduction. I'm Stuart with Franklin Hill Ventures doing just some estate unboxings today, uh, some houses that we cleaned out and really don't know what's in these boxes. And uh, we found some pretty cool stuff so far. I am here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And in addition to knickknacks, I have... Uh, excuse me, three antique booth locations here in the Knoxville area and then selling a ton of other platforms as well. So, All right, let's see what all we have in here. I mean, it looks... I don't... It's kind of made to look like Franciscan or Blue Ridge, but I don't think it is. It's not marked and it does have a chip on the back. So you have that. Just a little wall hanging here that was done by Cindy, whoever that is. Uh, here's a little egg, but it's broken. It's got cracks all through it. I think I'm just going to toss that one. In fact, you can see the broken pieces on the inside there. Here's a little miniature side sat iron that's from Safron. Says Mass and Gill on that side. And then Safe Safron on this side. Yes, there are lots of surprises, April. Here's a little porcelain basket with some applied flowers. There's no markings. Kind of a luster wear. You can see that. And here's a creamer. So that side. And it is Clinchfield, China. That's where. It does have quite a bit of crazing on it. Here's some Castleton China, and it's the Alberta pattern. I don't know that I've had anything in this pattern before. That'll definitely go into probably like my eBay store where I have most of my China. That piece is probably just going to be put in the trash. It's got tons of chips and cra crazy. It's not anything that I can sell, and it's not. I don't. I don't want to donate it. Nobody's going to buy it. In a thrift shop either. And then the rest of this box just looks like it's just clear plates. So nothing else really to show in that box. So that box was kind of disappointing. Nothing really that great in there. Tell you what, I may go pull a box of uh, ephemera just to see if there's any interest. That should be fun to look through those. No telling what kind of uh, cool stuff we'll find in there. Yeah, in fact, April, I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the people at our antique booths uh, does mosaics and she would probably like that so i will probably give it to her in fact i think we have a box that's just got all kinds of pieces of chipped china in it that she does uh does that stuff so all right let me go carry this out and i'll be right back
I'm sure leaving the stream isn't good for my audience. Every time I leave, the, the audience count drops. So I apologize on that. Um, actually, instead of ephemera, I found another box of stuff that we'll go through. Then this may be the last one today. It's 2.30 and I have my car at the shop and I need to go check on that. So here's uh, some kind of metal creamer. It's like pewter maybe. Oh yeah, it does have a marking on it. Let's see what it says. It says N E G B A U R maybe Negbauer, New York. So I'll have to do some research on that. But it's a pretty cool creamer um it's got a floral floral motif on it there and here's just a silver plated platter little nice etching silver plates kind of like clear glass you know that's hard to hard to do much okay here's the matching sugar bowl for the other so it's a creamer and sugar bowl set so yeah, I'll have to do some research on those. Here's some like kind of a kitschy souvenir plastic salt and pepper shakers. I assume they're most likely from Florida because you have the flamingo and the palm tree and the S and the P on the top. Those are kind of cool. Here's some, here's some little sterling silver miniature salt and pepper shakers. Hey, welcome in Christy McGuire Art. Thank you for coming in. Marcy, Marcel and Mendez, thank you. We are just unboxing some boxes that I got in, in this, that where my wife and I bought out a couple of estates. Um, so I really don't know. I mean, this stuff's been in my garage for over a year. So here's a little, I'm going to imagine this one might be sterling, but it's, I guess it's a necklace. You can see the little ball on this end. And it's got the little book on that end. Let's see if it opens up. I was thinking it might open up. It does have BRM or the initials on it. Well, I can't tell if it opens or not. You know, it may just be a book charm. I don't see a seam or anything, so I think this is just like a little book charm, but it says BRM. Okay, i uh, tell you what, on those, um, how about a... <laughs> No, Samantha, these items are leaving the garage. I've, I've done so much work on the garage. You would be proud. It's uh, come a long way since the video I made. I cleaned out one side. This is all from the other side that we've started working on now. So I've done a really good job bringing stuff in and bringing it out before I get other stuff. So we're getting there. All right. So on these, these were the, what was the name of the company again? And thanks for stopping by, Samantha. Appreciate it. Yeah, if anybody in here, uh, if you uh, want a good YouTube channel to follow, go over to Consignment Chats. Uh, they chat all about consignment, but they chat about other things as well. Uh, they do some YouTube lives. They do some recorded stuff. They have a Facebook group, I believe. And uh, anyway, the ladies of Consignment Chats, go check them out. Yeah, this was Negbar, N-E-G-B, or Negbauer. N-E-G-B-A-U-R, New York. It says 250. I guess that's the pattern. And then there's some other wording along the, the edge as well. Hey, Moody Mommy. How about a uh, how about a $10 start on the set of these? And then they would be the shipping is gonna be $8 for the US, $16.99 for Canada. I mean, if it's the first thing you bought, that'll be the shipping. If you bought other stuff, it might be combined and you get a refund. So I'll go in and add these. 
and we'll see if there's any interest. Let's see, add, auction. And as I mentioned, anything that I sell today should ship out tomorrow. Um, I mean, unless something completely unexpected comes up. So, but I generally always get my stuff out next day. So let's see, Canada's going to be sixteen ninety nine. All righty, list item. Had to stream. All right, I think it's there now. Let's take one more look at these. So, really cool designs on these, like floral. Looks like a uh, bunch of different kinds of flowers. And just, I mean, a little bit of maybe wear on the inside, like discoloration. Um, but overall, I don't see any dents or anything like that. So, all right, we'll go ahead and start this, and it is running. All right, looks like no interest in those at that price, and that is fine. So if you anybody changes their mind, just let me know. They're already in the store, so those will be easy to rerun. Uh, looks like we have some kind of chicken here. Oh, no, not a chicken, a reindeer. I just saw this. I thought it was the uh, the chicken's comb or whatever. But no, it's a ceramic reindeer instead. Alamo salt and pepper shaker set. So it looks like you lift out. It's got the cork in the bottom. It does have a chip on that corner. And then here's the other one. It's just marked Japan. All right, thanks for stopping by, Shy Girl. If I'm still on, I'll see you again here in a little bit. So you got the Alamo. My wife just went to the Alamo not too long ago. She was in San Antonio for work. Here's a little blue glass bowl. It's got grapes and such on it. No markings or anything. Hey, Sarah, Bath 206, thanks for coming in. Here's a, a pink glass ball, or it could be a hat. Does anybody know who might have made that? It is definitely pressed glass. It's got the, the seam in it there. Here's some... F.B. Rogers, just silver plated little plates. It's like a tea strainer. I think that's what that is. Am I right on that? Let's see if it's marked anywhere. Nice designs on this, though. Look at that. Let's see if it's got... It does have some like silver hallmarks on it, but I don't see like a name. If you can see right there, it's got 
some of like silver Hallmark stamps. So I have to do some research on that, but that's a really cool, cool piece there. Just a little brass dish there. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look at that. That is cool. It's a good glower there. That's uh, Hazel Atlas marked on the bottom. I love uranium glass. I should turn out the lights, but that glows really, really well. So Hazel Atlas pitcher. Me too, April. Me too. Although I am uh, creating some more room in my garage, so that's good. Pink, pink candy dish there. Cool star pattern in it. Running out of room to put stuff I'm taking out of this. Then, like a cubist pattern green dish. And then finally, looks like this is the last thing in this one. Try not to drop whatever it is on the floor. It's like an egg cup and a salt shaker. So would you put your egg in here and then salt it with this, maybe? No markings or anything, but just one shaker and an egg cup. All right, that was everything in that box. That was a pretty cool box. So I'll put it back in and show you as I put it back in. So we have the, and if there's anything you want me to run, just let me know and I will tell you what it will take. Here's this blue blue bowl, paper down in there, then you have this kind of hat shaped pinkish, I guess that's a pink color bowl there, and you have the ceramic reindeer. had the uranium glass hazel atlas pitcher no chips or cracks on that it's in wonderful condition just got the hazel atlas mark on the bottom you can see it there that one will definitely go to my booth most likely if it doesn't sell in here then we had the metal sugar and creamer that we ran earlier some of this stuff i'm not showing again a uh, little etched up metal tray yeah i mean whenever i put uranium glass at the booth it literally sells like i mean as quick as i can put it out there it'll sell and then you have the little tea strainer I don't know if that's probably silver plate, although, I mean, it looks like it could be sterling. I'll have to research the, the marks on that. Then just this glass creamer. And the Alamo salt and pepper shakers.
the Florida salt and pepper shakers, and the egg cup with the shaker. A little sterling silver salt and pepper shakers. I think that was it. Now oh, then the little fitted bowl with the star pattern. And then the cubist green bowl. All right, well it's 238. I've been on about an hour and a half now, I think. Does any I mean I'll keep showing. Do y'all want to see another box or y'all tired of looking at stuff? Just let me know and I can go grab. I'm sure I've at least got another couple of boxes. Okay, April. I figured you'd say yes. I didn't even look at these little spoons. Silver plated Sheffield. All right, I'll be right back then. Let me go see what I can find. In this one, just a little glass bell. I wonder if all this is going to be bells because here's another bell, like uh, that one's like clay with the flower design. This may all be bells. It's another crystal bell. Hey, Donna Doodads. Donna's Doodads, thanks for coming in. There's a little, it's like maybe a mother goose or some kind of nursery rhyme bell. There's not, oh. Here we go. It is. Oh, it's an Avon bell. So. Here's a little Christmas bell that was made in Japan. It's like a couple of. That one's made in India. I'm not sure where that one's made. Thing, but I went to an estate sale a couple weeks ago, and these people probably had 1,500 bells. That's not where these came from, but uh, I bought like 80 of them, and I've sold almost all of them online. Here's one that's Holiday Hostess from Japan. So it looks like after I get off this live, I will be listing more bells. It's just another metal bell. Here's like a bottle opener bell. Yeah, these people had bells everywhere. Amy, my wife, and I went, and I mean, it was crazy how many bells they had. Um... I mean, then they had some really cool, like, temple bells that were, like, huge bells. Here's a 1982 World's Fair bell without the clapper, though. Here's a Florida bell. I don't know. I don't want to really go through all these. I don't know how much excitement there are. There is for bells. It's a green glass bell. Ooh, that one's loud. Uh, 
Tell you what, I'm not going to open all those bells because, I mean, bells are kind of just, I don't know. Unless anybody's just got a dying urge to see the rest of the bells. Um, I think we've seen enough to get an idea of what's in that box. So let me know if you want to see the rest. Otherwise, we'll stop with the bells and I'll go pull another box. I am really appreciate everybody sticking with me. This has been really helpful for me because it gets it out of my garage and I'm putting it into an area right outside my office here where after I finish the live, then I'll start going through this and decide, am I going to take it to a booth? Am I going to list it on one of my online marketplaces? So, um, you know, this is doing these lives like this where I'm boxed is really part of the processing um you know, of the inventory, and it's hopefully y'all enjoy looking at it, and it helps me out because I get an idea of what's in the boxes and kind of moves it into the next phase of uh, processing. So, so yeah, I really appreciate it. Let's see, I think that was all of those. So, let me go grab another box, and I'm going to stick this one outside my office here. I'll be right back. All right, I don't think this one has that much in it, so, but. Uh, that pillow. I don't know what I'll do with that. That'll probably just get taken to the thrift shop or something. I mean, it's in good shape, but. So does anybody know anything about dolls? We do have this composite doll. It's got some damage and such, but like dolls isn't something I know much about. So I don't have any idea like how old this is or if it's worth anything. I'm guessing with the crack in her forehead that she's probably not going to be worth a whole lot. But I was looking to see if I saw any like maker's marks or anything anywhere. And I don't, so. Number on the back of the head. See, that's where I was looking, but I don't. I don't really see anything. Hold on a second. Let me. Mm, I'll have to look later. I don't see anything on this one. So I don't know. Maybe she's not marked. No, she does not have hair. It's just like, you know, part of the part of the mold. She does have the eyes that open and close. And so, I mean, if she didn't have the big crack in her forehead, it'd be in pretty good shape. But uh, but it definitely looks like some of that, like, composite type material. So, I've got a lady, a lady at one of my antique malls does a lot with dolls. So, I can probably take it to her and she'll be able to, uh, to tell me something about it. Here's a big, like, ceramic picture. Those things are hard to do anything with. And then it's just then there's the ball. There's the ball for the picture. And like I don't even know these these aren't even marked or anything with the material these are made out of. I don't think they're very old either. Like maybe like 60s or something. So yeah, that's all that was in that box was the doll and this picture and the ball. That didn't sound good. Dolls are so creepy, though, when they open their eyes. Yeah, I'll keep you posted if I find anything out about her. Uh, I'll have to take a closer look at her. I'm pretty sure I remember when I got that at, out of the house we cleaned out. She said, and this was an older lady, she said it was her grandmother's. So 
I mean, I would think it's probably, you know, early 1900s, just based on that. But, you know, that's just based on what she told me. So, all right, let me go grab one more box and I'll be right back. Let's see what's in this. And this might be just like China and stuff, which yeah, it's Rosenthal, which is German China. And so this is like a little demi ta cup and saucer here so let's see if it's a whole set that's in here yeah that's another one of that same pattern let's see if there's something else in here besides that here was their baby cup it's got their monogram on it Here's a Coppercraft Guild cup. If anybody drinks Moscow Mules, that would be great for that. Hey, TK's 37, Mid-Century uh, Monarch. Thanks for coming in. We've been going through just some boxes from my garage for the last, oh, hour and a half, two hours or so. And sold a few things, but mostly we've just been having fun seeing what... What's the next item we pull out? Hmm. So this is a Nesco. What would this be exactly? It's. Oh. I wonder if it's like a little planter. It's got a stopper in the bottom. And it does have an underplate. So. I guess it would be like maybe a little planter that you could take that out so that when you watered it, it would not hold the water. Yeah, that's what I think too, Monica. So they have a lot of little demi cups and saucers. This one's made in occupied Japan. Yeah, and then there's the matching saucer on that one. I actually sell quite a few of the demi tie stuff, like more than regular size cups, cup and cups and saucers. I guess people are more prone to collect those. Here's some little poodles and an egg, just in time for Easter. These are just like resin. Yeah, you know, my parent. neither one of my parents were into this kind of stuff, really. So, uh, like all my antique stuff, it's just, I don't know really how I got interested in it. Oh, so TK's, there's not. So if you see anything at all you want me to run, since, I mean, I had no idea what was in these boxes. If you see something you like, just let me know and, uh, I just add it on the fly, and I can tell you what it'll take to uh, to start the auction and also what the shipping will be. So just, uh, yeah, let me know if you see anything you like. So there's another one of those. Like I said, those aren't old or anything. They're, let's see what the marking was. Oh, they're Boyd's Bears figurines is what those are. Now, I do have a lot of stuff in my buy-it-now 
I didn't pull it over to the auction, but if you just search for Franklin Hill Ventures, all one word on knickknacks, uh, I have oh, over 300 items in my store <coughs> that you can look at. And I'm always open to offers on my stuff as well. A little crystal, like a crystal bud base there. Yeah, I mean, and really, T Case, it's just as much about, you know, just having fun looking at all this stuff together uh, as well. I mean, I've got to unpack it anyway, so I figure I might as well do it, you know, where other people can can look at it with me. And I've actually learned, like, a few things along the way about what things were, too. Here's a little baby dish with a matching spin. Or no, that's probably a jelly Probably a jelly server, not a baby dish, because it's got the little jelly spoon there. I know I've got my work cut out for me to uh, get all this stuff listed, though, after this. Here's a little teapot trinket dish, along with a... Just a little, I don't know what that is exactly. It's not a egg cup because it's not big enough. It's just like a little decorative miniature planter maybe. So it's like silver plated around a piece of glass. Tea bag holder. Is that what it is? Is that, yeah, tea bag holder there. That makes sense. It's actually signed by whoever painted that. And then... That one there. Oh, a deviled egg dish. You know, I mentioned earlier, like clear glass, like, you know, it doesn't sell particularly well, but this is the exception. Like when I put this at the booth, it'll sell really quick because people like deviled egg trays. So. Anybody else in here have antique booths or booths at flea markets or anything like that? We love our um, we love our antique booths. There's a candle with some chintzy fake plants around it. Here's the bottom of a butter dish, I think. It's either a little bottom of a butter dish or. Just a little snack tray. Maybe we'll find the top of it here in a second. Here's a Linux metal candle holder. A booth for your art. I sell a lot of artwork. Not art I've done, but I do sell a lot of, you know, paintings and prints and stuff in my... Uh, Especially at Beard and Antique Mall, that's probably where I sell most of the um, artwork. I mean, we probably have 50 or 60 paintings, prints, and such at Beard and... There's a little milk glass planter there, shaped like a diamond. Three thrift stores in town. We have quite a few thrift stores, but they've all gotten out of hand with their pricing. I mean, the good thing, like, I mean, I've been doing this so long now. I get usually a call or two a week from somebody for me to come look at stuff at their house. In fact, I'm going to somebody's house tomorrow night. Um, I think she said it was her aunt's house and her aunt had got put in assisted living about a year ago and it's been empty ever since. Uh, so I'm going over there and they supposedly have like a lot of handmade baskets and like Native American artwork and stuff. So I'm curious to see. It's not an area I know a lot about, uh, but, you know, hopefully, even if I don't buy it, hopefully I can help her determine like the best thing to do with it. That's, you know, I always tell people, even if I don't buy it when I come to your house, you know, I'll try to help you determine value, figure out the best way, you know, whether it's calling in an estate sale company because I don't buy a lot of big furniture and stuff just because we don't have ways to haul it or places to store it. 
we'll buy smaller furniture and the occasional bigger piece. Like we bought a nice curio cabinet a couple of weeks ago and all the contents. In fact, if you, that's the last unboxing I did was the contents of those curio cabinets and put the curio cabinet in the booth and priced it where we thought it wouldn't sell real quick. And then it sold like, the net, you know, like two days after we put it at the booth. So, I mean, it was good because we got more than we thought we were going to get for it since we priced it kind of artificially high. But, you know, I walk in the booth like the day after it sold, I didn't realize it had sold and there's literally stuff everywhere. I mean, the, they did a good job making it look neat, but it was still just a lot of stuff that they have to find places to put. So that's the curse and the blessing of selling furniture because you always have a lot of stuff on it. And then when it sells, you know, there's whoever happens to be working that day has to figure out where to put everything. So little divided clear glass relish tray. Here's an apple pie plate that's marked USA. So it's got the recipe right on the. Uh, Sometimes you'll find them and they'll have the lids and you can find them for strawberry pie, cherry pie, pumpkin pie, apple pie. So, it looks like the last thing in here is, this is from Ulster Ceramics in Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. And it's like a quiche dish, I guess, um, is what it looks like. So... And that was the back of that. So that was everything in that box. We've gone through a lot of boxes. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, now once I get off of here, the real work will start going back through all these boxes. And usually what I do is like I'll create three piles. I'll do anytime I'm cleaning something out. It's either, you know, I'm going to list it online. I'm going to take it to the booth. I'm going to donate it to a thrift shop. Or if it's, you know, something that's just like junk, then, you know, they'll have like a trash or dump pile to take stuff to. The good thing is so far in the stuff we've unboxed today, I haven't seen a lot of junk. So I sure will, April. I will keep my eyes out for you. I love the egg tray. As I mentioned, that's kind of one, the one exception to clear glass is any egg trays usually sell pretty well. People like deviled eggs, so. All right. Um, so do y'all want me to try to see if there's one more box out there that we can go through? and Or do you want to call it quits now? I'm pretty sure April will say, let's look at one more box, which is... Uh, which is fine. All right. So I'll tell you what. We'll do one more box and then I'll probably call it quits. It's three o'clock now. And I do have some other stuff that I need to get done today. Mainly like listing. For whatever reason, this stuff doesn't list itself. I wish it did. I mean, I don't mind listing, but it does get, it's just kind of tedious. You know, you get kind of in a routine and just power through it but like this morning I took a lot of, I had a lot of stuff to package I always do coming off weekends so um, it usually takes me a couple of hours to get everything packaged up I think I have I have maybe not as many as I usually have I think I have about 14 14 boxes of stuff going out today and a lot of times on a Monday I might have anywhere from 15 to 30 boxes from the weekend um now there were a lot of it took me a while because it was a lot of like multiple quantities of china i think i sold like four fruit bowls of a haviland pattern and four coffee mugs and then that teapot and then the rest of the stuff was not not as bad but you, you know i China's not hard to package, but it is a little more time consuming, especially when you have multiple pieces. Because uh, I have a certain way I do it, and so far it's been pretty successful. Like I don't double box or anything like that, but it's just, you know, making sure there's space between everything and it doesn't move or the two keys. All right, let me go grab one more box and I'll be right back.
All right. Well, it's not a lot. It's kind of two boxes, but it's a box inside a box. Although the top box doesn't have much in it, so. Yeah, here's just like a teapot of some sort. I don't even see a lid for it, though. It's like an aluminum made in Taiwan teapot. The bed base. The design's almost completely worn off. Get a drink of water here real quick. So there's the lid. There was a little basket, but it's the handles actually down inside now. So we will put that maybe to take to the uh, girl who does mosaics. Here's a old orange crush bottle. I don't know how old it is, but it says this special bottle protects the delicate fruit flavor and fresh taste. So that's really cool. Need to do some research on that one. There's a Santa Claus bell. And then the rest in this top box, other than this little vase, which is made in Taiwan, it's just stemware, so I'm not going to show it. And then, all right, so in this last box here, we have a Castleton China coffee cup. Oh, uh, you know what? It looks like this whole box may just be Castleton China. I don't know what I have to figure out what pattern that is. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to show all this because it's going to all be the same. Oh, the Alberta. Okay, it's that Alberta pattern. We saw the vegetable bowl earlier when we were looking at it. So. So anyway, I have a whole box of that stuff to go through. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, I sell a ton of China. So much so that Amy calls me the China King of Knoxville. We, or sometimes she calls me Replacements West. Um, I've got, you know, obviously not as complete a selection as Replacements does, but I do have a lot of China and pretty much buy it anytime I see it. Because you can get it relatively inexpensive doesn't sell for a lot, but it does sell. All those certain things like old Haviland from the 1800s sells really well. So, all right. Well, I think, I think that's it. I may do uh, later this week. I may do, well, I don't know if I'll do one later this week since the NCAA tournament starts and I'll be watching basketball, but maybe like a week from today, maybe I'll do a pop-up ephemera show. Uh, I didn't do any ephemera at all today, but I have boxes and boxes and boxes of that that we can go through. So if you like ephemera, watch for me to, uh, to pop up next week. The things that I sold should ship out tomorrow. If not today, I may just package them up once I finish the show here. Um, but yeah, everybody have a great day. Look forward to seeing everybody in other people's lives. Um, I love knickknacks and the community that uh, it, it is. It's pretty much turned into one of my favorite platforms that I sell on. Make sure you check out my Buy It Now's own knickknacks. You can just search for Franklin Hill Ventures uh, in the uh, marketplace area and it should bring all my items up. You can also go to franklinhillventures.com. Here, I'll just turn the camera around here. Yeah, go to franklinhillventures.com and that has links to all my social media sites. Um, mostly Instagram and Facebook are where I do things. I do have a YouTube channel, but I hardly ever do any videos. I used to do more, but it's just so time consuming and really it's just not my core, you know, 
I mean, I'm okay at it, I guess, but it's not really what I enjoy doing. So anyway, check those out and I will send you an email if I need any help with uh, any identification or anything like that, April. I really appreciate it. And everybody have a great rest of your, uh, your Monday. Oh, I know the feeling with that with the, the dog. Uh, I'm surprised she hasn't come down here to, uh, to nudge me to take her outside. So, all right, everybody have a great day and we will see you next time.